Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Please uh, feel free to come into a comfortable place. Amy, do we need to uh, make this a little bit higher, light-wise? That's the only other thing. Thank you. Um, welcome. Let's uh, come into a comfortable place on your mat. Thank you, Amy. And allow your bodies to find the earth beneath you and begin to sink your sits bones or your entire back body if you're lying down in the earth. And just become aware of the support of the ground. Become aware of your posture and whether or not you have a long spine and adjust to have a long spine and an open openness around your heart. Become aware of your breath and notice the in-breath and the out-breath as they expand the belly and lower it. And notice any constriction that you encounter as you breathe in and out any tightness that you encounter around your physical body where the breath is being constricted a little and soften those places. Take some small sips of in-breaths so that you're able to fill your lungs to capacity. Make the breath nice and long. And as you exhale, just feel the out breath slowly leave the body, releasing tension from the shoulders and the jaw muscles. And then start to tune into the experience of the subtle body, the sensations in your hands and the feet, sensations of the belly from the inside, the chest from the inside. And as you become aware of the inner body experience, notice how there is a bit more space that comes about where there is an openness to something else. the energy body, the felt sense. Notice how when we do all those things where we balance our posture, 
find the breath and allow the breath to be spacious and start to direct our attention to the felt sense and all those three together invite a connection we start to feel connected Take a deep breath in and a breath out. And if you're lying down, start to move the body a little so that you roll it over eventually and bring yourself up to seated. And as you arrive to seated, Make fists with your hands and circle your wrists a little bit around. You can keep your eyes closed. Expand the arms sideways and kind of open around your chest. Feel the palms and the contact of or the subtle sensation in the palms as it as there is this contact with space and reach those hands all the way up feeling this space around the palms and the fingertips and flip the palms back down towards the earth and let them release back down nice and slow And do that a few more times. Slow and steady and patient breath. And an appreciation of the felt experience of palms and the space, the texture of space. going a little deeper in the subtle and the subtle experiencing of ourselves. Inhaling up and exhaling back down. Let's do this two more times. Last time, connect the palms and bring them to your heart space. Feel the gentle touch of the palms. Notice any tension in the body that's still being held. Let go of any hardness of heart, softening the chest a little more. Setting an intention today of compassion for every single aspect of yourself that arises, knowing that that compassion will expand further into the world towards all other beings. And with that intention, we open with the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. Beautiful. Take your time and make your way into a table pose. Allow your hands to stack under your shoulders and start to arch and curl the spine. Separate your knees a little wider. Walk your hands a bit more forward. Draw your hips back with the in-breath. And the out-breath, shift forward. Dropping your hips a little down. And back. Inhale back. And exhale. In. And out, getting a little bit more into your shoulders. Two more times. Last time. Good. Stay here, take your left hand in front of your right and draw your hips back towards the left. And back to the front. Inhaling forward and exhaling back this time, kind of shifting the in breath and the out breath. As you open your heart, draw yourself forward. And as you exhale, press your hips towards the left, getting into the side body. Three more times. Last time, maybe hold there for three, two, and one. Coming back through to the center and taking it to the other side. Plant your right hand either on top of over or in front of your left hand. Draw your hips towards the right hip. Exhale. On the in-breath, come back. And again. Do this three more times. Last time. And hold for three, two, and one. Nice. Come back into your table pose. Feel into the side body a little. It should feel pretty open at this point. And Take your time to curl the toes under and extend the hips up and back for downward dog. Notice if your legs still feel really tight and if you'd prefer to alternate between going back and forth, child pose and downward dog.
Come up onto the tip most of the toes, bend the knees a lot and draw your hips more back. Let your belly touch your thighs. And slowly start to release the heels towards the ground. Shift your weight forward in a plank pose. Readjust the placement of your feet. Maybe they need to walk back a little. And again, back to downward dog. Bend the knees, come up onto the tippy toes. Draw your belly to your thighs. And forward into plank. One more time. And forward. Nice. Lower yourself all the way to the ground, bringing your knees down first. Let that body touch the ground. Elongate the legs nice and long and separate them to the outer edges of the mat a bit more. And draw your legs further and further back, making space around the hip flexors. And rise up, bringing the elbows sideways a bit. And take some time just to kind of get into the front of the body here. Just rocking side to side, stretching from the belly, lowermost belly upwards. And then engage your legs a lot. Activate the shoelace sides of the feet into the ground. And lift your heart higher, bringing those elbows under your shoulders. Sphinx pose. Draw the sternum forward and up. Engage your legs, the pelvic floor. Also, the navel pulls in and up. Breath in. And on the breath out, release down. Press yourself through table to downward facing dog. Become aware again of the steadiness of the breath as well as the spaciousness of the breath. Become aware of your bones and notice if your bones are being squeezed too tight by your muscles and, and kind of visualize your bones floating a little bit in your body so that they're not, they're not so tight, tightly held, while at the same time maintaining awareness of the strength of the muscles hugging in, but only in a wise effort way rather than a too efforty way. Good. Let's shift forward again into plank pose. Feel the activation of the core here. And lower down onto your forearms for a forearm plank. Tuck the tailbone under and draw the chest forward. Squeeze your glutes and your quads. Keep your gaze down as the crown of the head draws forward and the elbows isometrically draw back. For three, two, one. Lower the hips down and come into your sphinx pose. Again, that isometric drawing back of the elbows as the hips draw forward. Legs engage for three, two, and one. And maybe this time you play with a reverse push-up as you curl your toes under, engage your legs a lot. And on the exhale, press yourself up to plank. And to your downward facing dog. 
Breathing in patiently and out patiently. And the right leg slowly rises up towards the sky. Inhale. Dial the hip open, stacking the hips. Root down a little bit more through your left foot as you reach higher up. Square the hips and release. Take it to the other side. As you stack the hips, I like to keep the leg elongated. You might bend the knee. And square the hips and release. Deep breath in. And breath out. Bend your knees, press your hips back and look forward, inhale. With the exhale, walk forward to come into a forward fold. Maybe a rag doll here, grabbing a hold of opposite elbows. Feel the weight of the torso here as you do this. Notice if your knees are sinking inwards. Maintain a stacking of the joints. Two more breaths, in and out. slowly rise up. I like to place my hands on my thighs before pressing through the feet up. Ah, as you arrive, just notice your feet firmly planted and readjust your bearings here into this posture, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let your hands relax alongside your body. Let the knees bend slightly. Again, find the long spine with the open heart. Finding the posture, then the breath. And feeling into the felt experience, releasing tension. We'll start to flow together. Inhale, two arms reach overhead. On the exhale, bow and hinge from the hips in a forward fold. Inhale, a halfway lift. On the exhale, plant your palms, step the right foot back, then the left foot back into a plank pose. The first Chaturanga Dandasana, I like to take it easy by lowering the knees to the ground. Hug the elbows in towards the center as you lower halfway. Then all the way. Engage the legs like we did earlier. Open your heart this time, lifting your arms off the ground. Elbows draw back. On the exhale, maybe a reverse push-up if you liked it, even keeping the knees on the ground. Back to downward facing dog. Find the posture. This long spine, open heart, without collapsing. Find the breath. And then find the felt experience of your body. Beautiful. Let's take the right leg up towards the sky, breath in. On the breath out, bring the knee to the chest, curl. Do it three more times. Last time. 
And step forward lightly in warrior one. Dialing the back heel down. Use your core to rise. Breath in. On the breath out, open it up to your warrior two. Flip the front hand and reverse your warrior breath in. As you breathe out, bring your hands towards the ground for your plank. In this plank, you might attempt to lower down halfway to Shataranga Dandasana without releasing the knees, or you bring the knees again to the ground. If you want to take Baby Cobra, come all the way down. Otherwise, open up into Upward Facing Dog. Back to your Downward Facing Dog. Breath in. Let it go. Left leg rises up. Inhale. On the exhale, knee to the chest, curl. Three more times. Last time. Step lightly in warrior one. Adjust the placement of the back foot. Root into your back foot as you rise. Breath in. On the breath out, warrior two. Flip the front hand and reverse it. Cartwheel the hands back down. Either to down dog or vinyasa through with your option. Deep in breath. Let it go. Take two more, just like that. Let's take the entire flow once again with your own pace. The right leg rises to the sky, breath in. You can bring the knee to the chest as many times as you wish before stepping forward for warrior one. And proceed into your flow on your own pace. Remember, you can always skip the Shataranga going straight to down dog. And eventually transitioning to the other side. All of us will eventually meet back in Downward Dog. There's no rush if you're still flowing. Taking five breaths in Downward Dog or in a child pose.
If you're not in your downward facing dog, make your way back to it. The right leg rises up, inhale. The hip dials open this time, maybe bending the knee and drawing the heel a bit more towards the left shoulder. As you square the hips, elongate the leg and bring the knee to the chest, stepping forward for warrior one. Allow the back heel to dial down, rise up, feel the sturdiness of your posture and the spaciousness of your breath. Palms come to heart space and any adjustment that need to happen with the placement of the feet, you can do. Reach those arms all the way overhead, breath in. On the breath out, circle the arms through, placing them on top of the sacrum and hinging forward. Tuck and roll all the way up. Reach the arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, palms to heart space. Let's do it again, inhale. Exhale, palms stack and you hinge and tuck and roll up. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, palms to heart space. One last time, inhale. Exhale, hinging, curling. Inhaling, arms overhead. Exhaling, palms to heart space. Become aware of the palms once again touching and the bones floating. They're not squeezed. Your shoulders are relaxed. Breath is spacious. Your gaze is steady. And from here, opening it up to your warrior two, expand those arms and circle the wrists around a bunch of times to give them a break. And then open up through the arms. And as you reverse your warrior, elongate the front leg, reaching high. Root down a little bit more through the feet to reach up and come into a side angle lunge. Let that top arm either expand upwards or reach above your ear, maintaining your heart open, your feet active. For three, two, and one. Rise back up, elongate the front leg, breath in. On the breath out, cartwheel the hands back down to down dog or vinyasa through. Left leg slowly rises up, the hip dials open. The hips square again, long leg, and the knee comes to the chest. Lightly step forward to the right, to the left thumb as you come into warrior one. Palms come to heart space. Feel the subtle energy coming down through the crown to the third eye, to the throat, to the heart. Maintain awareness of the subtle body. And let's reach the hands overhead, breath in. On the breath out, we circle the arms through, hinge forward, and tuck the chin into the chest and roll back up. Inhale, arms overhead. 
and palms to heart space. Do it again. Inhale all the way up and exhale down. One last time. Taking it in and out. The drishti is nice and focused on a point in front of you on the ground. And see if that concentration where you could potentially go out towards that drishti, see if the drishti can come towards you so that your eyes are receiving the point of focus versus reaching out for it. One more in-breath and out. Beautiful. Open it up to your warrior two. Expand those arms, make fists, circle wrists. And open and close the hands, kind of getting a little bit more into your wrists. Then reverse the warrior with the front leg extended. Root down a bit more into the feet before lifting even higher. And from here, coming into that side angle. For three, two, one. Releasing from the pose, expand again for an in-breath. On the out-breath. Come on back down to down dog or vinyasa through. Deep breath in. Long breath out. Two more times. The right leg rises up to the sky with the in-breath. The out-breath brings the knee to the chest curl. Step forward for a crescent lunge. Keep the feet hip distance apart. Bending back knee a little bit and then extending it to feel the difference here in the pelvis, in the lower back. And then find a spot where it feels really good on your body. It's not too tucked under or too reached back. Reach the left arm up. Inhale here. The right hand is on your thigh. As that left arm is reaching up, notice again if you're holding really tight to your bones and see if you can find that place of in the middle where you're not over-efforting From here, we'll take it into a twist. So hinge forward, and if that elbow comes up and over your front thigh, and it feels good for your body, then do this without yanking your left shoulder. Otherwise, keep your wrist or forearm up and over the thigh. Take it in for five. And out four, three, two, and 
and one. Dial the back heel down. Come up to warrior two, but this time on the other leg so that you're facing the back of the room and you're kind of sinking into that left hip instead. And from here, come into your triangle pose as you elongate that left leg and hinge. If you have a block and it feels good on your body, you might take it to the inside or outside of your left leg to place your hand on top of it. Otherwise, keep your left hand on your shin. For four, three, two, one. Rise up, breath in. On the breath out, face the front of the room again, me, face me, over here. And adjust the placement of your feet hip distance with long legs. And once again, take your time to reach that left arm up and right hand down. Root down a bit more. See what, what happens when you activate those feet firmly into the ground. And then hinge forward to come into a revolved triangle. You might skip the revolved triangle by simply coming into pyramid pose and staying here. Otherwise, you could take that block past your front leg to the side and twist a little bit deeper. You might place it to the inside of the foot too. For three, stay active in both feet too. And one, release back down and come into a runner lunge. Walk that back foot back a bit more and toe heel the front foot towards the right edge of the mat, toes facing outwards for a variation of lizard pose, keeping the back leg lifted. Some of us will come into a full lizard where your back knee can drop and you rock to the outside edge of the foot. Maybe come on down onto the elbows. For me, it feels better when I'm elevated, but for some of us, it's not possible to feel the hip stretch unless we go further. For three, two, and one, to heel that foot back to the middle, plant the palms down, and extend the front leg up and back into a three-legged dog, maybe a flip dog if it's available and feels good on your body. Breathing in. And out. Uh, coming back through to the center for downward facing dog. In breath. Out breath. And the left leg slowly rises up with the inhale. The exhale comes knee to chest, stepping forward for crescent. Rise up. Situate your pelvis in the right place. Reach the right arm up. Left hand down. And notice your level of tension. Can you release that tension? 
down, down into the ground. Wonderful. From here, preparing to take that twist once again. Hinging, either elbow over thigh, or forearm or wrist. For four, three, two, and one. Dial the back heel down. Open it up to your warrior two on the other leg. Take a breath in. And on the breath out, triangle pose. For four, three, two, and one, rise back up, turn to face me again, adjusting the placement of the feet, preparing for pyramid or revolved triangle. And take that right arm all the way up again, root down firm into the feet, and then start to hinge forward. into either a forward fold or a twist. For three, two, and one. Come into your runner lunge. Toe heel the left foot towards the left. Come into any variation of lizard that you wish. Take your time to come on out of the pose and toe heel the left foot towards the middle. Plant the palms, framing it. Curl the back toes under and extend in a three-legged dog or a flip dog. Come back through to the center for downward facing dog. Breath in and a breath out. Two more. Good. Bend the knees, press your hips back, belly to thighs, look forward, in breath. On the out breath, walk or float forward in a forward fold. As you arrive into your forward fold, take your hands under your feet, bending knees a lot. If that's not available to you, you can come into ragdoll or supported elbows on thighs.
One last in-breath. On the out, release the hands, bend the knees, sink down into chair pose. Rise. Arms are parallel to the ground or reaching up, depending on which one feels best for your shoulders. Feel your weight both in the balls of the feet and in the heels equally. Feel the ground nourishing your body for five, for four, three, sink a little deeper, two, and one, rise. Relax your hands alongside your body, maybe even soften your gaze. Let everything settle down to the ground. Feel your breath evening out. Good. Engage those hands again, those palms. Reach up with the in-breath. On the out-breath, palms to heart space. Let's take our time to come into a balance series. Walk your way back to the back of the mat. And take your way into a balancing on your right leg, taking the left toes to the ground and just kind of knee back and forth. Good. Then shift your weight into your right leg, feel all corners of the right foot on the ground, and come into balance pose here, taking your way into simply keeping the knee bent or deciding if you want to grab a hold of your shin or your toes to extend the leg forward. Keep your shoulder in its socket though. So there's a difference, right? The shoulder can go forward. See if it can stay back, even if you have to bend that front knee a lot. And potentially opening up to the side. Right arm extends in the opposite direction. For three, two, one. As you bring it to the front, release the hand and hold for three, two, one, and land forward, shifting your weight into that left leg and taking it into a back and forth motion again. You could keep the toes on the ground here. And on this side, I want you to come into tree pose. So either on the shin or above the knee, keeping your hands, palms, you're sensing those palms. You're sensing your breath. Your gaze is steady and open to receiving. Now reach those arms sideways. Let your bones feel like they're flowing on the inside of your body. Reach your arms up. And palms back to heart space. Bring your knee back to the center. Elongate it and hold for three, two, one, land, and we're going to come into airplane to Ardha Chandrasana half moon. So we're going to start with elongating the left leg back, 
And then from here, maybe a block under the right hand as we stack the hips for half moon balance. For three, two, and one. Land the foot back, face the wide edge of the mat, and come into a wide-legged forward fold. For three, and two, and one. Turn back towards your right foot. Come into a runner lunge, and step forward in a forward fold. Sink down into a chair pose. Relax your shoulders, adjust your pelvis to neutral for five, four, three, a little lower, two, and one, rise. Relax your arms, find your gaze. Find your heartbeat. Find the breath. Find your gaze. And we'll take it all the way back to the back of the mat again. We'll start the series on the other side. Shift your weight into your left leg and come into balance with the right knee bent. Engaged glute muscle to support the posture. Either staying here or extending that front leg forward with the knee bent. Open it up to the side if it's available. Come back to the center. Release the hand and hold for three, two, and one. Land it forward. And take it to the other side. Tree pose. Palms come together. Gaze is soft. Heart is open. Breath is spacious, ground is reliable, open up, and reach up. Palms to heart space. Knee comes back to the center. Leg extends for three, two, one. Land it and prepare to take that airplane pose going into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon.
Notice how when you squeeze your left glute more, it's easier to balance. Slowly land and a wide legged forward fold. One more in-breath. With the out, walk your hands towards your left foot, runner lunge. Allow the back knee to drop. And rise up into a low crescent. Either stay here or walk your front foot a bit more forward and sink down into a hip stretch. Squeeze your glutes a lot. Take your hands behind your head, interlaced, and press your head into your hands and hands into your head, finding that back bend. Shin to the chest, Jalandhara Bandha, while the sternum lifts. For three, two, and one. Release out of the stretch and come into pigeon on this left leg. If the prone pigeon isn't desirable by your body, adjust it to a reclined pigeon. or another pigeon of your choice. Got lots of pigeon choices. Notice how when we get out of our heads just for a little bit and focus on something else like the movements and postures and breath and direct our attention towards the felt experience. Notice the peace that comes about. And let yourself track that throughout the day when you feel as if you're suffering or you're stuck into a mind state that is unhelpful or unskillful. Just learn to redirect your attention back to a long spine posture, to your feet on the ground, your breath. Just come back to the present moment.
where life really is. When we are present, we are free. A couple more breaths. From here, we're going to transition into any stretches in between uh, and then coming back into that crescent lunge on the other side with the knee down. If you skipped that, then feel free to just come straight into your pigeon on the other side. stepping the right foot forward for that low crescent. Either staying with the joint stacked or hinging a bit more forward for a hip stretch. Take care that that's not hurting your hip. Tuck the tailbone under. Take care that the pelvis is neutral. And then take the hands behind the head again for another back bend. Activating head against hands hands against head, and then drawing the sternum up for three, two, and one. Slowly release out of the pose and come into pigeon on the other side. And come back to freedom, to the in-breath and the out-breath. Right here where life is happening. As long as we are present with everything that arises, nothing can take away our freedom. We are here. Vibrating with life. not imprisoned in the 
drama of the mind. Slowly start to come out of the pose and make your way onto your backs if you're not there already. Once you get to your back, prepare for a reclining twist. You could pull your right knee to the chest and give it a little squeeze. Elongating through the left leg to begin with. And then take that knee up and over to the side. Maybe stacking both knees on top of one another. Back to the center. And taking your left knee to the chest for a squeeze. And then pulling it up and over to the side for a reclining twist. Maybe stacking the knees on top of one another into the twist. And just this morning, I woke up with this drama in my head about something. Come back to your Shavasana and relax your bodies in a reclined position. And as soon as I noticed myself caught up in this really unimportant thing, I asked myself, is this helpful? Is this wise and helpful? And the answer was no. It was contracting my body. It was making my heart rate get faster. I was starting to get uncomfortable. And as soon as the answer was no, it was like, okay. Now let's come back, come back here to the feel of the bed under my body, the support of the pillow. To the in-breath and the out-breath. To the sounds of the birds. There were birds singing, chirping. to the experience of peace available to me, should I choose to notice it. We have a choice in where we direct our attention.
Sahana Vavatu Sahana Upunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Mavedveshavahe Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Take your time to start to find some movements throughout your body. Reawakening the senses. Maybe you roll over onto your side. As you slowly rise up to your meditative seat, bring yourself back into the hands on the heart or joint at the chest. And I'll share with you the translation of the mantra that I just chanted. It's called the Togetherness Mantra. May we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we work together with great vigor for the benefit of all humanity. May our study be enlightening, and may no obstacles arise between us. Om, peace, peace, peace. Honoring these words, we'll close with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to teach you today. The great spirit in me bows to the great spirit in you. Namaste. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.